This is the 2024 Ford Bronco Sport Freewheeling Edition. It's a throwback to the 70s and 80s on the exterior decal kit. I'm not actually the biggest fan of it. We'll talk about that, but there are some things that are nice about the Bronco Sport. It came out in 2021, and since then, it's had a lot of success, lots of competitors as well, and this is actually off-roadable. Let's start off with the decal kit. You can see that this spectrum of colors from red to yellow, that's a throwback to the late 70s and 80s. I think I had a sweater like that with a spectrum pattern across the middle. I think a lot of us did. But what they've done is they've taken the Bronco logo here. It is white with red backing. And this is the same Bronco Sport as we've had in the past. However, in 2025, there's going to be some big changes. So if you're thinking about a deal on a Bronco Sport and there's a 2024 on the lot, they're probably going to be a little bit more flexible because when the 2025s come in, they're not going to be as flexible on some of the upgrades that you're going to see. We'll talk about that along the way. Besides that, you'll notice that it's a nice clean front. It's got a high liftover, so you can go off-road it. What's new for 2024 is the Big Ben model has these colorful graphics. You can also get a blacked out edition. Small rear doors are one of the issues that a lot of customers complain about. That means narrower access to the rear seating area. Again, that's going to change in 25. The Bronco Sport does not offer removable roof or removable doors. If you wish to go that route and go serious off-roading, then you want to look at a full-size Bronco. The freewheeling package trim adds that red, orange, yellow stripes along the side pattern, almost like a sunrise or a sunset. I'm still just not a fan of it with the red wheels. I think it's too much. The red wheels are part of that package. If you want to change it, I guess you could buy it and make them all black. I think that would look better. It's a little bit like a clown mobile to me, but I'm just being honest with you. There is an optional bike rack that you can get for the inside that will store a couple of mountain bikes. You do have to remove the front wheels. And the roof rack will hold up to 600 pounds, and that's strong enough for a roof tent. The warranty is three years, 36,000 miles, and the powertrain is five years, 60,000 miles, and that also comes along with roadside assistance. Coming around to the back. One of the things that Ford has done nicely is they allow you to access the glass in the back without opening the hatch. But if you do open the hatch, the door is here. The glass button is on the other side. And inside you have between 29 and 32 cubic feet of storage, depending upon which engine. Fold down that second row, which is 60, 40, and you have between 60 and 65 cubic feet of storage. Underneath the cover is a full-size spare tire, which you do appreciate because if you are going to go off-roading, you'll be glad you have it. Inside the rear, you also have exterior lighting as well as a 12-volt outlet. There are two engine options for the Bronco Sport. Both suggest premium gas, but regular gas is perfectly fine. If you want the best fuel economy, obviously premium is the way you're going to go. Our test vehicle is 180 horsepower, 190 pound-feet of torque turbocharged three-cylinder engine with 26 miles to the gallon combined. There is an optional two-liter EcoBoost four-cylinder engine with 250 horsepower and 277 pound-feet of torque that gets 23 miles to the gallon in a zero to 60 time of 7.2 seconds. Our test vehicle rides on 17-inch matte black painted wheels that have red highlights to go along with that free wheeling coloring. All Bronco Sports are standard all-wheel drive with the GOAT, which stands for Goes on All-Terrain Drive Modes. When it comes to safety, there's a top safety pick plus, which is the top rating from IAHS, as well as the maximum five-star overall score from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, also known as NHTSA. Ford Copilot 360 Assist Plus comes with the vehicle standard. There is an optional bundle of additional safety features like adaptive cruise control, with lane centering and evasive steering assist if you choose to upgrade to that. Our test vehicle has the smaller three-cylinder engine, and honestly, it's more than enough for just driving around town, maybe doing some light off-roading. And we'll do a little bit of light off-roading in this gypsum mine that's around the corner from me. And overall, this Bronco Sport is really easy to drive, just like all the Bronco Sports have been out since 2021. Now, we know that there's going to be some changes for 2025. It's going to look different. It's going to have more space. It's going to have more engine options. It's going to be a lot more coming, but that doesn't discount the 2024 because you're still getting a great value. And again, there's a lot of competitors. We'll talk about that in the end as well as the price because these are certain factors. When you go to buy a 25, you're going to pay a higher price because there's going to be a higher demand. It's pretty quiet inside considering I'm on a freshly paved road, so I didn't expect anything less. But when you get to the rougher off-road segments, we'll get that here in a second. You can hear that it's just a touch louder, but that would be normal in pretty much any vehicle. Now, if you're light off-roading, maybe going to a campsite, taking your kids to a soccer game, or you know whatever it is that you like to do, I, I think this is more than capable. You've got the different drive modes, which are nice, that GOAT mode, which is goes on all terrain. We'll have the normal eco, sport, slippery, and sand modes. Right now, we're just in the normal mode. No problem going up the hill. This little engine is more than capable, and you can run it on regular fuel if you wish, which will save you a few dollars.
dollars. There is a start stop technology button, which is here in the center, which I would hit every single time because personally I find it frustrating, but all the controls are super easy to use. You've got your lights on the left, all your controls for your safety and everything are right here in front of you. Just really, really easy to use. And that's why this vehicle is so well for Ford because when you get in it, it's intuitive. You're not looking through deep screens. Now the center screen is only an eight inch and the new vehicle will have a standard 12.3 that will match the standard 12.3 that will be the gauges in front of you. Again, I like the fact these are real gauges because people keep these cars for a long time. And when cars get over 100,000 miles, less than you want to deal with an electrical issue. You won't have that, a technical issue with all of this if it's all digital. So Ford did a really nice job by having real gauges so that it's easy to drive. And for a long, long time, which again, a lot of brands aren't thinking about that. They make it so digital that if something goes wrong, you can't even drive the car. So well thought out from that perspective. Regular radio controls with a real knob and vents that are adjusted. And I do like the red in the interior. The seats, again, I like the outside. Just not a fan. I appreciate it. I respect the fact that it's the late 70s and 80s. And yeah, I was around at that time. Doesn't make a difference what age I was. But the fact is, everything is nice and intuitive. Go down that center stack. You've got a place to put your phone or your glasses or whatever you want. Normal climate controls that anybody can use, including three-stage automatic. There is three-stage heated seats. There's no ventilated seats. These are cloth seats. It's totally fine because it's easy to clean. Two large cup holders. you got the dial shifter, which Ford has had for a while, goat controls, and a good size glove box. Soft center armrest is nice. Harder surfaces with a little bit of softness here. And again, this is plastic, but look at, you're buying a car that has great value. And I see a Ford GT that just pulled out in front of us. Ford's best built product, in my opinion, a 2017 GT. One's got one running around here, so I gotta climb up on it and see if this car, oh, so pretty. Ford builds some nice cars from trucks to performance cars to everyday driving SUVs. So they've really come a long way in building cars that people want. So I give them credit for that. Overall, the safety systems are easy to adjust. They're here in the center screen. You've got your audio, navigation, your apps are here as well. Ford's got a whole pile load of mobile apps as well as Sirius XM. And there goes that GT. I don't think this vehicle's gonna catch up with it. Go into the settings here and you've got Ford Pass Connect, which allows you to connect your phone to the car. You can do all kinds of connectivity from that as well. Bluetooth, Sirius XM, and Bang & Olufsen audio system, which is super impressive in a car at this price point, is available, as well as a dog bundle, which as a dog owner, I appreciate it. It includes areas for you to tie down your crates or to separate the back seat from the other seats if you have a larger dog. But again, lots and lots of additional options that you can personalize this car and make it perfect for you. One of the important things when you test drive a vehicle like this is to sit in the seats and find out if these seats are comfortable for you. Now these are sport contour seats, which means there's a little bit of support laterally where your legs are and then up here on the side where your body is. If you're a bigger person, you're not going to find these seats uncomfortable. Cushioning is nice. There is a lumbar on the driver's side, which is appreciated. And this is a pretty base car. It came in around $33,000 and we'll talk about all of that in the end. But when you're driving a car, at this price point, typically you're not getting lumbar and typically you're not getting comfortable seats. So they've done that and they've made it very stylized. I mean, the red inside I like a lot. The other colors is pick a color, any color, in my opinion. But there's a lot of different variants you could buy this vehicle. And if you like the decal package on this car, you can buy this vehicle. Again, other trim levels may not offer the freewheeling package. So it's important that you look because there's also a blackout package because a lot of people like that, especially me, I prefer the blacked out package. Visibility on this is great. You're sitting in a higher seating position, big piece of glass. The sills are about the right height. I can see out the back, plenty of visibility. And if you're thinking about a light off-road or maybe you're looking at a Jeep Renegade or a CRV or some of these other cars, take this one for a test drive and just see how it fits for you. And also don't forget to put it in a parking spot, see how easy it is to drive and if it fits into your garage or wherever you park your vehicle. Let's talk about the pros and cons for the Bronco Sport. Well, first off, I do not like this decal package. I'm trying to be nice about how I say it. I would personally just want an all blacked out car or a bright color or something because this vehicle is a lot of fun the way it is. However, if you love this pattern, you should be able to buy it and it is available. It is a one year only, so it will be available on the 2024 and it's called the free wheeling package. So it's important to know that. Standard all wheel drive is a major plus. Easy to use controls, top safety, which is really important, IHST 
top safety pick plus plus the maximum five star crash test rating says that the Bronco Sport is a very safe vehicle for your family and great for off road. And there's plenty of customization you can get, whether it be at the Ford dealer or you want to buy aftermarket. There's lots of things you can put on the roof or in the back. And just going to have a lot of fun with this vehicle and make it a very capable daily driver for you. On the negative side, access to the second row was a bit tight. So it's important that you check out that second row if people are going to be sitting back there. But there's going to be some major changes for 2025. And that we will be covering in the very near future. When it comes to the price for the 2024 Bronco Sport, it starts at $31,390. That will get you the entry level with the smaller engine. However, if you want to go further up, the Bronco Sport Badlands, the top of the line is $39,985. And this freewheeling test car that we have came in at $33,990. There are a lot of competitors in this category. It's important that you test drive all of them, find out what works best for you. The number one competitor is the Jeep Wrangler, Honda CRV, Hyundai Tucson, the Kia Sportage, the Mazda CX-5, and I also think the CX-50 because that's more of an off-road. We've reviewed both of those on our channel. The Toyota RAV4, the Volkswagen Tiguan, and the Subaru Forester. Now, there are other vehicles that could cross over into this category, and if you're looking for something bigger and more muscular, look for the full-size Bronco. But overall, this vehicle is a lot of fun, and you can see why it's very popular because it gives you a lot of value for your money. I'm sure you have some additional questions on the Ford Bronco Sport. Put them down below, and also put your comments. Do you like this decal kit, or are you like, not a chance? I'm curious what people are saying, because this is going to make a difference, and Ford will see this, and hopefully they'll read some of your comments in a positive and negative way. If you'd like to support our channel, you can buy me a cup of coffee. The link for that is in the description, as well as all the ways to reach me. I'm Lauren Fix. Thank you so much for watching.